All right. Praise God. I got the big one out this morning. Amen. I tell you what, man, the devil hates the preaching of the Word of God. When it comes forth with power, clarity, and the anointing of the Lord. And this morning, God has given me a message for this church. And something I said the other day, and I said it with some intrepidation, but I will say it again. At this word that I'm going to preach this morning, you're, you will be held accountable for it. You see, those that stand behind this sacred desk, they are held accountable for every word, every message they preach. And that's why sometimes I ask the Lord to forgive me for some of the stupid stuff I say. I'm still human, and I'm trying to get away from that. And the Lord is helping me. And you guys need to pray more for me. And I want you to turn to the book of Psalms. I want you to turn to the 144th chapter of the book of Psalms. And when you get there, say amen. amen. And I don't mean when you see it up there on the board, say amen. amen. You know, sometimes, you know, we've got these nice little smartphones. And I was telling the people in the... Uh, new creation class this morning I felt like a hypocrite because I was carrying around a smartphone and I think you should be smart if you're going to carry around a smartphone and uh, I just hate it when I carry around something that makes me look stupid all right and sometimes when we just use our smartphones rather than I don't know I like something that's on paper I do amen but I want you to go to Psalms 144, and I want you to follow along. I'm going to read two verses. Blessed be the Lord, my strength. Did you get that? Who teaches my hands to war. You mean we're in a war? Well, if you didn't know that, let me give you a news flash. You are in a war. <laughs> and my fingers to fight. You know, I, I was sitting there thinking about that. Your hands to war and your fingers to fight. Your finger is what fits on the trigger. Oh, yeah. And your fingers is what pokes the devil in the eyes, too. He says, My goodness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield, and he in whom I trust who subdues my people under me. And this speaks of the Lord there. All of this speaks of the Lord, but it addresses us also. He's my goodness. He's my fortress. He's my high tower. You know, if you're going to fight your enemy, you want to be in a high tower. You don't want to be fighting uphill. You want to be fighting downhill. He's my deliverer and my shield in whom I trust. The title of this message this morning is called the art of war. The art of war. I preached a series that was called, Is This Not War? And I preached five different messages on that. And it was quite revealing to me as the Lord began to continue to reveal things about this war that we're in. And since I preached those, I have learned more about the art of war. Good to see you there, Pastor Israel. Oh, man, good to see both of you guys, man. Amen. Sit your hand. All right. Good to see you guys. And he always has those little Israelites following him around, too, man. He's a true, true Israelites, man. That's awesome, buddy. It's a blessing to see you guys, man. But we've got to understand that we're not just in a war. But we've got to understand how to fight it. And there are certain things that we need to understand. But what we understand about this war cannot come from the minds of men. And I don't know how many different books out there it's called Spiritual Warfare. And about the only good thing they're really useful for is to be able to start a fire in your fireplace when it's cold. And get the wood going. 
That's about all they're worth because it comes out of the mind of men. It glorifies man and kind of elevates them in this great battle that they're fighting. And if you don't understand certain things about this war, you will get defeated. You'll become discouraged. You'll become or have the feelings of inadequacy, and you're not because of Jesus Christ who lives on the inside of us. But a war is a series of battles, not just one. Understand that. You know, so many times we think we're going to jump this hurdle and the race is over. No, it ain't. We've got to continue to fight the good fight of faith. But we've got to know how to properly hold on or to, to, to grasp this eternal life. We've got to understand that God did not call us into the kingdom of heaven in order just to sit down and get a free ride. It ain't happening. God has called us to do a work. And there is a parable about the talents. How He's given each one of us talents. He's given us a required work to do. And He has properly fitted us to do that work. But we've got to understand that there's going to be a series of battles. And we're going to learn more about this. You know, what is the objective of the war? And what is the nature of this war? What is our objective? It is easy to lose sight of what God has called us to do as we come to church. Some come to church very faithfully. Others come when they can. Others, they will come when it's convenient. I'm not talking to anybody in here. I hope. Or sometimes you come just because you feel guilty you haven't been here in so long. Like Brother Dan. No, he's been sick, but acting like he's a new member. But the fact of the matter, I'll guarantee you, Brother Dan and Sister Diane have both missed coming to church and worshiping their God terrible. I'll guarantee it. It is easy to lose sight of who we are, who we belong to, and the price that Christ has paid for us. We get lackadaisical in our relationship with the Lord. It's easy to get caught up in the affairs of this world. Now listen to me very closely. And our priorities tend to become temporal in nature. Well, I want to make sure I have a good job. I want to make sure I put enough money away for retirement. I want to make sure I got proper health care. Brother Phil, it's good to see you too, man. Yeah, I see you hiding back there. Amen. But all of a sudden, we become more temporal natured. We forget about what we're really here for and what is really going on. There is a war that's going on around us, and God has called us, and He wants to teach our hands how to war in our fingers how to do battle. And that's what we're involved in. We better understand and recognize it. Now relax. You don't have to get all nervous or anything because the Lord's going to show you how and what to do. We must stop what we are doing. Now listen to me very carefully. I know I say that a lot. And the reason I say that is because I want you to listen to me very carefully. I listened to one of the messages I preached. I said, good grief. I just keep saying, now listen to me. Now, what do you think they're doing, man? But I want to get your attention when I'm saying certain things. We must stop what we are doing, and I'm in regards to these temporal things that we have as priorities. Look at our spiritual compass and begin to correct our heading. You know, if you're out in a ship, and there is no horizon, and there is a cloud cover where you can't see the stars... You have no idea where you're going unless you look down at this compass. And you must know that when you leave, you have a heading. It's like flying a plane. 
when you're up in the air, you have no bearings except the heading that you have laid out to get where you want to go. It's God that has laid out our heading. And He has a compass. And it's true north. And He wants to lead us by His Spirit and show us what to do. Sometimes, and here's what I'm saying. I don't want to speak in euphemisms. Then you go, well, I've got to get my headings. No, you've got to stop and say, Lord, what is it that you want me to do? Lord, I'm here. I'm your servant. I'm available. I'm not real good at what I do, but I know you can improve that in me. But I'm here and I'm available, and that's what God is interested in. And you have to get your bearings. You see, what we do has eternal consequences for either good or for bad. And I want you to turn to one other Scripture here. I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians. We are Bereans here. And I want you to know what I'm telling you is from the Word of God, not from the Word of Jim. Because the Word of Jim will do you no good. Now I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. Here's what the Lord is telling us and telling this church. And He's telling the true body of Christ. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body. He's talking about here on planet earth. According to that he has done, whether it is good or whether it is bad. There's coming a payday. This is why I say we get so caught up so many times in this temporal nature. Of thinking, well, you know, you, you want to get everything done tonight, and you look at your grocery sh- list, and you know, you, I don't know how you grocery shop or whatever, you go out and, and you shop for whatever it is, and you get this on your mind, well, I got to be sure I got to do this at job tomorrow. And there's nothing wrong with being organized, but don't lose sight of the true priorities that God wants in your life. He wants to interrupt your routine, that He might use you. There's somebody out there that you may come in contact with that God wants you to talk to. If you're so caught up in the natural that you're not attentive to the moving and the power of the Holy Spirit, you're going to lose out on what it is that God wants to do through you. Not only that, but the person that God wants you to talk to. There may be somebody that's going through a trial. They don't even know who you are. And you happen to be walking by them in the park. Or you may be walking by them when you're out walking. Or when you're in a grocery store. Or at work or whatever. And all of a sudden you just walk up and say, Listen, you might think I've lost my marbles. But I want you to understand something, and I've got to tell you this, because I can't get away from it. Whatever it is the Lord tells you, God wants you to know that He loves you. He's involved in the situation that you're in. And He's got an answer if you'll seek His face. He will perform a work out of love for you. And I just want you to know that God loves you enough that He sent me to tell you about it. So now it's not a euphemism. You know what I'm talking about. Don't get so caught up in your temporal routines that you are no longer heavenly available to God Almighty. People, keep in mind you're a child of God and He wants to use you. And it's not a casual thing, but it's something that is going to be answered to on the day that we stand before Jesus Christ. I don't want to hang my head. I know that my brother and I, we talked one time, not to rat him out, but my wife and I have experienced the same thing. You know, the Lord loves us enough to chasten us. That's not to beat you, or some people talk about going behind the barn and warming up your backside. No, He wants to let you know the seriousness of who you are in the kingdom of God. And my brother and I went to a car show one time. And there was a guy there that was getting some booze out of the back of his vehicle. And the Lord told my brother to talk to him. 
Now, of course, I was the pastor, and my brother thought, well, the pastor ought to talk to him, not me. He's the big dog. And my brother says, did the Lord tell you to say it? I said, no. You see, there are no big dogs in the kingdom of God. We are all children of the Most High God. If we make ourselves available, He will use us. My brother passed up the opportunity to be able to speak to this man. And I will guarantee you, it will never happen again. Because the Lord chastened him. My wife and I had the same situation that happened to us. The Lord told us to do something and we didn't do it. And the guy died. You see, the thing about it is, people, eternity is at stake. You see, this is the art of war. It's to be a soldier that is available. So the high commander, oh, hallelujah, listen to me now. The angel's faces are always directed at the Father. Ready to be dispatched at any moment. And I'm talking about from a spiritual sense, our faces ought to be always pointed at the Father. Lord, whatever it is you want me to do, God, don't let me too be, oh, don't let me be too earthly bound. Don't let me be so consumed with my agenda that I don't have time to hear from heaven. But Lord, let me do that which you've called me to do. Oh, hallelujah. God, this, uh, man, people, God has done such a work in this church by bringing the message of the cross. Now, let me tell you something. Listen to me. If you don't know what Romans 7, 9 means, you don't know the message of the cross. You may know about it, but you don't know it. Romans 7, 9 says, this is Paul speaking, I was alive once without the law. But when the commandment came and sin revived, I died. If you do not understand what Paul is talking, you do not understand the message of the cross. And my friend, this is a place where you can learn. We got a thing called the cross wise class and the reason God told me to call it that he wants his children to be wise about what it is that Christ did on Calvary so these vessels can be opened up to the power of the Holy Spirit and I'm not just talking about running around talking in tongues I'm talking about being made available and being filled with the Holy Spirit that he can use you the Lord said that if you'll seek him in private he will reward you openly oh hear what i'm saying now amen god wants to use us we must understand our objective now hear me very closely is not coming to church on sunday and wednesday and the prayer meetings on monday and tuesday we most definitely should give all of our attention to be here but that is not the objective well, I've come to church. I fulfill what God wants. No, 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 no. That is not the objective. That is not the art of war. That's a place where the true soldiers of Christ gather together. Oh, hallelujah. At the oasis of God Almighty where He can pour out His Spirit and refresh us that we can go out and do battle out here in the kingdom of darkness. I'm tired of the devil taking advantage of the body of Christ. It's time we step up. We take authority over the devil. Because Jesus Christ, when he died on Calvary, that blood gave us power. And that power will always be there. Amen. You know, they talk about radical Christians. and They have no idea what being a radical Christian really is. Being a radical Christian is understanding what it is that the Savior did on Calvary and the price that He paid there for us to be fit and armed and ready for war. Amen. The devil's going to get some today. Mark 16, 15 says this. Listen to this. You want to know what our objective is? And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach. This has the definite article before it. The 
gospel to every creature. It is the gospel. It's Christ and Him crucified. The gospel has been so corrupted, so perverted, you can't even recognize it anymore out in this apostate church. Oh, yeah. Heavenly Father, as I come before you right now, I thank you, Lord, for your anointing, which I sense. Lord, you know my heart. I pray, purge me of my fleshly abilities and fill me with your spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, have your way in your house. Have your way in your children, Father. I pray, God, that you would anoint them. That, God, they are able to do a work that only can be done by the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, for it breaks every yoke. I thank you, Father. And I pray, Lord, that your children have ears to hear what the Spirit has to say this morning. For, God, I know that we will stand before you one day, and we will be held accountable as a church, God, for what we've done. And I pray once again, Father, that you will bless this time that your people are here in Satan. Take notice, we take authority over you by the blood of Jesus Christ. And you'll not steal the food that belongs to the children. And once again, Father, I ask God, let your word be freely brought forth, Father, in the name of Jesus. And God, we ask it in his name, and I thank you, Father. Amen and amen. Matthew 24, 14 says this, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. I want to make you very aware of something, people. Those satellites that are twirling around planet Earth, they are sending out the gospel from the platform of Sun Life Broadcasting Network. Satan has so many times said, well, you can't give that $5,000 every month. You need it here. Blah, 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 blah. You know what? God instructed us to do it. And I said, us. Every time we give $5,000 every other month, we are contributing to fulfilling what the Scripture says right here. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, it's being broadcast all over this world. He didn't say every person would hear the gospel. He said a witness to every nation. People, I think we're there. And it's by the grace and the mercy of God that the church hasn't been raptured out of here yet. But the Lord has a work that He wants us to do. I'm telling you, the sun is about to set on the kingdom of of darkness. You hear what I'm saying? And people, we must rise up out of our slumber. I'm going to tell you this. I was waiting. I said, Lord, I'm not going to write it down in my notes because I want you to tell me when you want me to tell the people about this. And it's now. Last Monday. You know, you go to a prayer meeting, you'd be surprised what God will do. He might even show up. He might, you know, a lot of people think you go to a prayer meeting just to talk to God. Let me tell you something. It's a two-way conversation. God wants to talk to you. And when I was praying, people, my heart is that this church might flourish spiritually. That we might bear much fruit. Because the Lord has commanded us to do that. And He has given us the tools in order to do this. We've got the right message. We've seen people come up here and give their lives to the Lord. And now, as babes in Christ, we are teaching them about this new creation. We're teaching them about the essentials that they need in order to live for God. We're teaching them how to keep from Satan from destroying that which God has placed inside of them, which is this re gene new creation that's in the likeness and the image of God. And as I was sitting there praying, or I pray at a chair, and I began to pray, and I began to weep before the Lord. You know, one time Elijah said, where's the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob? 
I began to weep, and I said, God, where is the God of the book of Acts? Where is the God of the book of Acts? I want to know, and I began to weep. Because God knows my heart, people. There ain't no games being played. I know that we face eternity, and there are people out there that are playing games with God. And they need to see the real thing before they'll ever be convinced. They can't see a person living one way and then living another way and saying they know that Jesus is their Savior, which is a lie. And then the Lord asked me a question. He said, where are the people of the book of Acts? Where are the people of the book of Acts? You know, I've heard... Brother Dottie say, read the book of Acts and get ready. Nah, 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 nah. I'm going to tell you what, you better get involved in the book of Acts. You better read it and see what God did there. And you better look at the price that had to be paid in order for the Holy Spirit to move the way He wanted to move. And there was a lot of praying going on. There was a lot of moving in the power of the gifts of the Spirit. Hear what I'm saying. And it was the next night that the Lord gave me a dream. He said, the young will hear, see visions and the old will dream dreams. I don't see visions. I have dreams. So the Lord let me know you're old, Betty. That's all right. See, his hair is supposed to represent wisdom. And I don't want to be a hypocrite about it. But the Lord gave me this dream. It's for the church as a whole, but it's for this church too. And I've had a lot of dreams about the church. This one, I, I was just all of a sudden, there I was in the sanctuary. And there, wasn't, there was no black ceilings and lights down low and smoke coming out and blue and red lights flashing back here with special stuff set up to make it look like something on Las Vegas Strip or whatever. I walked in there and it was brilliantly lit up. It was bright. And Sister Cynthia was there. And I walked over. She says, we've got a little problem in the Sunday school. I said, okay. And I walked over there and we went into the room and we seen some of the situations that was going on. And I said, okay, we'll do blah, blah, blah. We'll do that. And everything was fine then. And then I walked out the other door and then all of a sudden it was the other part of the church. And it was lit up. And I looked over there and people were in a buffet line. Had their trays out. And boy, they were all over there. And all of a sudden somebody looked around and says, oh, there's the pastor. And I looked at him. And then they just turned around and ignored me. And I walked over there to see what it was. Oh, the smell was intoxicating. This hot gravy, steam coming up. Now, I know we got dinner coming here, and I'm getting you ready for it. (laughs) Biscuits were there. Man, they had fried chicken. They had vegetables over there. And Oh, different cuts of meat and steaks and stuff like that. Man, they just, everybody was just busy, you know, had their trays, and they were picking and choosing what they wanted, you know, and going around. Pretty soon, I found myself outside, and I was trying to find somebody to tell me, when did this start? See, the pastor, he don't ever get told anything. He just kind of finds out at the end of the deal. And I was, and finally somebody went out there, and they told me, they said, listen, We started doing this on Wednesdays. I said, really? I said, he says, yeah, but we've decided to do it every day now. I said, really? And then I woke up. And I, you know, I said, Lord, (laughs) am I just hungry or what? (laughs) And I have had enough dreams that the Lord's given me. I knew this was of him and I was waiting for him to explain it to me. And sometimes it may take a day. He'll give you a little piece here, a little piece there, a little piece here. And then pretty soon all the puzzle fits together. The Lord said, my church is divided. You need to hear this. He said, my church is divided. He said, there are those who seek my light. 
They seek me. They seek my face. And then there are those who are carnal. And they seek what they want off this carnal buffet. That's what they're doing. They're not interested in the Word of God. They're interested in being fed carnally. People, that's why we've had people come in here and their carnal nature was not fed. They didn't feel like they were being... They did, they, see, they didn't understand, but they weren't being exalted. Oh, wow. You know, you guys are so good. You do this, you do that, or whatever. And man, God's pleased with this, God's pleased with that, or He's not pleased with this. No, 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 no. There's only one thing that pleases God, and it's faith. That's it. And the Lord showed me that carnality is rampant in the body of Christ. But yet, there are those that seeking Him, but there were far more over here at this buffet. And they had already made up their mind that they're going to change it from Wednesday night to every night now. They want to be fed carnally. You cannot do war when you're over here in the buffet line picking out and choosing what you want. Why do you think there are so many churches in this town? Because everybody is in the buffet line trying to find out what they want to eat. They don't like the smell of it or the texture or the taste. They go to the next part of the buffet line. Well, I'm going to tell you, there's no buffet line in here. There's a King of kings and Lord of lords. He reigns on high. And what He wants is what we do. Amen. He gives the orders. He serves out what we need to eat. Amen. You know, somebody, this young lady stopped by the house and caught me outside. And she said... You're a pastor, aren't you? And I wasn't dressed in a suit. I had my shorts on. My hair was all messed up. And, uh, you know, when she was talking, you know, I was trying to make it look halfway decent. Had my old T-shirt on. It's got food on the front of it. So I can remember what I ate. And, you know, and she says, you're a pastor, aren't you? And she, I said, well, yeah. She, I said, the neighbors told us you was a pastor. I said, Really? I said, and I never told him I was a pastor that I remember of. And uh, she said, uh, well, we're selling these candy bars uh, for a dollar piece, and we only got three left. I said, really? I said, well, listen, I don't want the candy. I was being real pretty strong there. And I said, but I'll go get some money, and I'll give it to you so you guys can raise money for your songs or whatever you're doing. And I went up there, I had four dollars, and I said, all right. And I came back down somewhere between up there and all the way back, I decided I'm taking them candy bars. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> so I took the candy bars, my wife got one, I got two, because I'm bigger than her. And I need more. But she said something. It was quite amazing. She said, oh. You know, she says, we live right over here. We go to such and such church. So where's your church at? And because I got a little stone out. And I had to get a stone because this thing is so heavy. A thief is too lazy to steal it. And it says, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And she says, boy, I'd like, she went, hallelujah. I'd like, I said, hallelujah too, sister. I said, uh, she said, man, I'd like to have one of those. She says, uh, where's your church and all this? She said, do you know Pastor so-and-so? Or do you know this? I said, no, I don't. And what I couldn't say was the reason we don't have fellowship is because we do not agree on what's being preached. And it breaks my heart, man, that we cannot have fellowship. There's another person in this town that's supposed to be preaching the message of the cross. I have my doubts. But I'm going to, if the Lord gives me the grace, I'm going to call him. I want to talk to him. People, what we need is other churches around here that's preaching this same message. It's not about just us. I want other pastors that will preach this message. But it has to come from the throne and not the pew. Because they will not listen to what the pew has to say. Those in the pews will have to leave if they don't want to continue eating from the buffet line. And I want, this is my heart, this is the reason we got this video ministry because I'm going to be pointing my fingers at the preachers. I am. Because they're going to hear what it is that God has to say. 
Amen. And if you don't turn this boat around, you're going to be responsible for the whole thing sinking, Brother Jonah. Amen. Now let me get on here. We have our marching orders. And this is going to be a one or two or three message thing. I knew I could, there's no way I could get this preached. Now listen to this. We have our marching orders. I want you to put up that picture, if you will, that I asked you to put up. But we have our marching orders. We are soldiers of Christ. And this is not an idle term. We are true soldiers. Now listen to this. Well, that ain't it. All right. We'll get it up here in a minute. Now listen to me. I'm going to wait for that picture to go up so we'll be ready. I guess I should have let you know, Bobby. But anyway, if you get that picture. Now listen. I want you to listen to this statement very closely. Sometimes the Lord gives me something that's very deep, and I have to think about it, I pray about it, and then I weep about it, and then I shout in tongues over it, because He gave me this. He showed me this. Victorious warriors. Listen to me. Vic, those that get the victory win first and then go to war. All right, I want you to look at that. Brad might recognize his picture up. Yeah, turn these down. There you go. And is that as big as the picture is? Or is it going to, can you? Okay, that's all right. Well, there's more people in there. This church has won many successive battles. One after another after another. Now, let me explain what this is. This is the Berean Assembly. This is where it started. We call it the cave. We were down where my wife officed. And this was a meeting room down there. And God opened us up, didn't cause us anything. They had all the chairs. And if you look behind, we had all the carnal things. <laughs> we had the coffee. We had the donuts. We had all that stuff there. We were just kind of a family. Because this is what God told me to do. When He told me to start the church, and I told you this before, I didn't think about, well, how do I do it? Where do we go? Who's going to cut? None of that. I was just excited that God talked to me. I said, man, God, and I knew it was God because I've heard His voice before. I want you to start a church. And then when I got back, He told me where to go to church for a year. You see, we've got to be careful about getting ahead of God or, or laying out behind. We've got to be right where God wants us to be. And I said, well, okay. And then the Lord spoke to me after I'd been going to church there for almost a year, predominantly black. And like I said, I learned to stand for an hour and clap hands for an hour, man. I mean, because, man, it was something else. And I tell you, I loved, I found some wonderful brothers and sisters in Christ in there. Brother Foster, who I love dearly today, love him. And the, the pastor, Brother Mitchell, love him dearly. Had the wrong message, but I loved him dearly. And I tried to talk to him, and the Lord showed me something. He says, the pastor doesn't change from out in the... Uh, the seats out here. He, he doesn't change from, from there. He changes from the throne down. That's how God deals with His people. That's what He does. It. And he never, he never would listen to me. And that's fine. I learned something there. And then the Lord spoke to me. He says, I want you to teach your family this message of the cross. And it's when my mom and dad moved down here. And this was our congregation. There's my mother. There's my dad. There's my brother. And Brian is in there too, and his wife. And then there is my grandson's back there in the back, and that's uh, Brad's son. And that's where the Lord started it. Or you can turn that off and turn the lights back up if you would. Thank you very much. But we had, you see, we had the victory before we ever went to fight. That's how you win a war. You have the victory before you ever go out to fight. Let me tell you about somebody that had the victory before they ever went out to fight. His name was David. It's the Lord that directed him. Oh, there were distractions along the way, trust me. And there's been distractions in this church along the way. But we keep fighting the battles. We keep fighting the battles and the Lord keeps giving us the victory. Well, David didn't put on the armor of Saul, but he put on the armor of God. And the Lord told him what to do. You go out there and you take that uncircumcised Philistine down. He is not going to mock me anymore. 
And that's why he was taken down, because he was mocking God. Not these little cowards that were standing back here just shouting insults back at each other. He went out there, and he already had the victory. He already, God had already given him the battle. And that's the way. You've got to win the battle before you ever go out. And you see, that battle is won on your knees. You hear what I'm saying? Let me just slip this in real quick. If you aren't coming to these prayer meetings when you can, you will stand before the Lord. And let me tell you, you want the God of the book of Acts? People, we've seen nothing. Oh, I know we get kind of excited when the Holy Spirit moves and we come up and the Lord touches us and all this. People, we ain't seen nothing. We ain't seen nothing. If we'll become the people of the book of Acts and they were prayer warriors. They got on their knees and they prayed and they sought the face of God. And when they got up, the Holy Spirit led them and directed them. And I tell you, once we are fully empowered by the Holy Spirit, we are not going to have enough room for the people that truly want to be a part of what God is doing in this building. You hear me? You hear me? But it's conditional. It is conditional. We must understand, listen, that Satan is defeated. Oh, we talk about it. Ah, Satan's been defeated at the cross, and then you get beat up every week by this defeated enemy. Well, listen to this. This is found in Romans 8, 35. You can just listen to me. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who? There's no who's out there that can get it done. Now, when I say separate us from the love of Christ, I'm not talking about some false theology out there. The people say, well, God loves us. He'll never send us to hell. Blah, 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 blah. You're right. You'll send yourself to hell if you reject Jesus Christ as your Savior. No, no. Your salvation is conditional. It's based on faith, and it's based on faith who Christ is and what He did on Calvary. It absolutely is conditional. But He said, who can separate us from the love? And that is the care of our God. That's what He's talking about here. He's not talking about living a lifestyle that, who cares what God wants? I'll just do what I want because nobody can separate me from the love of God. Let me tell you something. Those in hell today are loved by God. But I guarantee you, I don't want to be loved by God in the pits of hell. I'd rather be loved by God around His throne as I worship Him. So understand what He's saying here. Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution... Now as I name this stuff, I want you to understand. Christians experience this stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. (laughs) Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? (laughs) As it is written. Now listen to this very closely. People have misunderstood this Scripture. For your sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Oh, bless us, Lord. We're just going to go out and get slaughtered. Oh, yeah. We'll be a martyr for Jesus. Oh, let's see what it says here. Nay. That word in the Greek says, "Ha uh not so. Let me tell you, the sheep of God's fold is overlooked by the heavenly David. And I guarantee you, any wolves try to come in after his sheep, they're going down. Amen. He knows how to lead us by the still waters. Oh, yeah. He knows how to lead us and bring us to those green pastures. That's our shepherd. He said, nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors. You know why he says more than conquerors? Those conquerors out in the world, all they can do is to take over earthly kingdoms. I got news for you. We as the children of God can take over spiritual kingdoms that the devil has claimed, and we can take them in the name of Jesus. Amen. My Lord, I wish I could get a witness. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. 
It's for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels. I'm talking about those angels that follow Satan. And they are powerful angels. Nor principalities. I'm talking about the powers of darkness. Nor powers. That's other. Those are the lower ranked ones. Got the little demons. You know, you ought to ask God which demons are assigned to you. Well, right now, just them little bitty ones. <laughs> when you grow in me, I'll get you a big one out there that come out to you. Yeah, I got that itty bitty demon. Yeah. <laughs> you think I'm messing with you. I'm not. That's the truth. See, the Lord's not going to allow anything to come on you more than that which you can bear. Amen. Amen. And I, I don't know about you, but when I walk around, I want the kingdom of darkness to see Jesus Christ reigning and ruling on the inside of me. And they say, make way. This is a true child of God that knows the message of the cross, and he ain't messing around. We can't discourage him by taking his stuff. We can't discourage him when he gets sick. We can't discourage him when the Lord allows us to take things from Him, He continues to praise His God in the valley. Oh, amen. Oh, hallelujah. Though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I shall not bear. Oh, hallelujah. That's the ones the kingdom of darkness fear. And I tell you what, I, not that I want, I'd like to stay at the size of the demon that the Lord knows that I can thump him, man. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. People, we are victorious before we ever get sent out. If the Lord is the one that's structuring this fight. My Lord, listen to me now. Nor things present, nor things to come. What do you mean things to come? You ever had the devil come in and say, Boy, you're going down tomorrow. Doctor said you got cancer. Got to go get that chemo of therapy. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? My God may have something else in store for me. Because you don't dictate my future, buddy. It's my God. Now, let me just interject this real quick. I said this in the new creation class. And I'm going to say it again and be very careful how you listen. When you worry... And you get anxious. Let me tell you what you're doing. You're worshiping the devil. Oh, yes, you are. Because you're believing him. You see, the Lord said to be anxious for nothing. Now, that don't happen overnight. Trust me. And the Lord knows that. And he gives us his grace and his mercy to help us to grow in this grace of his. But there are times that we are literally shocked by something. And Satan comes to read our epitaph. Oh yeah, this is it. It's all over. It's going down. Let me tell you, this church, more than once, the devil has written the epitaph. I've had people that come to this church that faced me straight up. Say, well, I noticed the congregation, the number of people are going down. We've heard this church is just about out of business. And you guys are going to shut the doors. Well, let's see, that's about eight years ago. Amen. You know what? It's God that raised up this church. It doesn't have to be sustained by the power of my flesh, but it's God Almighty and the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. This is His church. He's King. He's Lord. Amen. I'm His servant, and I follow His orders. I tell you what, Paul had a messenger of Satan to buffet him. You know why? This man believed God so much that they would come behind and say, Oh, this is a man of God. Blah, blah, blah. He turns around, shut up. Oh, yeah, it's in the book of Acts. And you know what? They got all mad because this guy, was, this lady or whoever she was, was used for their business purposes. You know, like, like a fortune teller and all that kind of stuff. And I want to tell you what. When, when Paul was shipwrecked, he didn't go, Oh, God! 
here we are out in the middle of the ocean. What are we going to do? The Lord said, stay in the ship. He wasn't nervous at all. He told the Roman soldiers, stay in the boat. Stay in the boat. God said, stay in the boat. They weren't Christians, but they knew that man knew God. That's what the world's looking for, people. Stay in the boat. Stay in the boat. We'll be all right. They started letting down lifeboats. He said, you better stop it. Better cut it. Better be done. Stay in the boat. They all stayed in the boat. Guess what? The Lord took them right up there and parked them. Yeah. Boat was tore all to snot. Wasn't worth anything else, but wasn't nobody hurt. Paul got out. He didn't go over to him and say, that wasn't all right. All right. No. He wasn't interested in self-glory. We've got to get away from that nonsense and wanting our flesh exalted. You know, the reason so many healings are not done is because man will take the credit. Oh, you know, it was me that prayed. Oh, mm, I prayed for him. That's why God doesn't do a lot of healing around here because man wants to take credit. That's why during worship, God will heal people. Ain't nobody laying hands on them. And I'm going to tell you, be very careful during the worship service about laying hands on people. You better hear from God before you start disturbing their worship. They may not need none of your flesh. All you got to do is hear from the Holy Spirit. He'll direct you if He wants you to pray for them. You leave them alone. Let them worship God. God don't need your assistance in healing people or meeting their needs. Now, I'm just saying that as a pastor. Because I don't want Satan to take advantage of you to use you in a way that stops other people from worshiping God. You hear me? That's all. You don't have to be a pastor or pray for people. My Lord, He said pray for one another. But let me tell you this one last thing about Paul. Got a shipwreck, got out there, built a nice old fire, and Paul reached over to put it. He said, he was a little, man, I'm a little cold here. Got a piece of wood. Put, reached over to a snake, deadly, man. Bit him on the arm. What do you think we'd do? Oh, my God. Anybody got a knife? Cut suck this poison out of me. I mean, oh, is it swelling? My heart's picking up. Was it a deadly snake? Oh, Lord. You see, that's the people of the book of Acts. He'd already had his prayer life straightened out with God. He already had a relationship, and he knew how to worship God. He had no fear. He wasn't about to worship the devil by being anxious about what happened. When that snake bit him, he didn't do nothing but shook it off in the fire. Amen. And everybody looked at him like, wow. Maybe he don't know how serious a situation that is. Maybe we ought to tell him that's a really poison snake. That's how people in church want to tell people, oh, this is a really serious problem you got. All you ought to do is be telling him, I know a God. I know a God that can answer the need in your life. He's done it for me, and he'll do it for you. This God is alive, and he is King of kings and Lord of lords. Stand to your feet. I'm going to preach on this some more next week. It's called the art of war, people. And we're going to learn a lot about it because God has set our hands to do battle. And if you don't understand how to do it, you're going to get your brains knocked out. But if you know how to do war, you're going to be very victorious. And you're going to claim ground for the kingdom of God. And that's what God has instructed us to do. And we are going to do it in the name of Jesus, by His grace. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we come before You right now. <laughs> Lord, we love you as much as we know how. And we worship you as well as we know how. But Father, I pray you do a great work in this church to the glory of our blessed Redeemer. And I've always prayed that you and you alone be exalted in this house, Father. And I pray God make warriors out of us. Help us to be stalwart. Help us to have men and women of valor, God, that will not back down from the enemy. The Lord always depending upon you. And Father, once again, I pray you strengthen your people, Father. Strengthen them and keep them, Father. And bring them back at the appointed time. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.